What is going on, guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central stove processor? Guys, today going back to basics over in the prep and pack side with forceps, guys. Forceps are a very common instrument, man. They go together with needle drivers and just about every single surgery you can think of. Um, it may not be in every single set, but you're going to see them so much and so many different varieties that you will know a forcep, a thumb forcep, okay? Thumb because it's operated with the thumb, even though those other forceps are too, but you got to use your index finger too. But this is thumb action, right? An index, almost like um, chopsticks in a way, right? You kind of hold it the same way. But anyway, forceps come in every variety, style, size, uh, uh, color, Whatever you think of, there are forceps out there. So we're here in the prep and pack side. Our decon team did an excellent job cleaning this. So this should be a walk in the park with inspection, right? But we wanna make sure, right? We wanna make sure that they did what they were supposed to do. So what are your inspection points with, with um, forceps? Well, first and foremost, this one's a no brainer. I always say do the easy before you get to the difficult. So we have two exact same forceps here, right? But look at this gap on this one, right? So I, I purposely bent this and shake. This is not good, okay? This is automatically sent out for repair. It's a lot, I mean, if you operate it now, if you have a strong gorilla grip, okay, this isn't a hard, uh, hard to operate, but there's no reason why a forcep should be opened up that wide, okay? Usually a forcep has a nice little gap on it and it doesn't take, takes very little effort to close them, right? Open and close them in very, very little effort, right? Especially when it gets to the larger sizes. So it shouldn't be like you're working your finger grip trying to open and close this thing, right? So this is automatically, you put this off to the side here, that goes off for repair. But what's your inspection points? We're gonna leave these off to the end because that's a special group of forceps, right? But our stainless steel forceps, and we wanna bring out our handy magnifier here, right guys? So it's all nice and cleaned up, okay? Make sure our light on it work, beep, beep, okay? So what are we doing with our magnifier here? So lighted magnification, guys, we are concentrating on that jaw, right? We wanna inspect for cleanliness, right? All along the shaft of this instrument, right? All along the tip real quick, especially in that union, you wanna make sure that where that union's at, that there's no cracks, that the crack isn't extending past there where it's almost separating, and that there's nothing really chalked up in there or caked up in there hiding, right? Okay, so you inspect it for your cleanliness. Again, I always say start with the easiest, so you should have started with your alignment, okay? Bring the force up together, make sure the jaws align and that they're locking into place, that one isn't bent all over the place or that is cockeyed like so, okay? If you got some a cockeyed forcep like that, it's a bad forcep. But you definitely wanna inspect the tips. Now I told you about these, the bakeys, that these guys get really, really dirty. And I wish you can see this on the camera, but that tip on that, you see it right there in the corner, right there? Yeah, that's some coagulated blood right there. All right, or coagulated something, but that's not good, right? Okay, what you want to don't, what you don't want to do is find that brush from out of decon and brush it on there. This is dirty. This goes back, right? Okay, all your forceps you're inspecting the same exact way. Make sure that the tips align and you're checking for cleanliness, right? Um, I told you um, in the other video that you want to look for um, these forceps that look alike, but they're not alike, right? Okay, so they look almost alike, but you have to look at why it's not. Again, in the comment section, if you can tell me why these are different, let me know why these look so different, okay? The other thing you wanna look at is um, forceps with teeth, right? So if they have teeth like this one, okay? First of all, you wanna see what your count sheet is calling for. Is it calling a two by one, two by three? Um, make sure those teeth interlock, right? Okay, if they're not, okay, if, like if it's off to the side, like so, that's a snaggle two forcep. You don't want a snaggle two forcep. You want them to interlock closely, okay? The other thing is you want to make sure that it actually has teeth in there, right? Or one of the teeth worn out on that, you probably can't see that on the camera, 
but one of these teeth are like almost non-existing on this forcep, okay? It doesn't supposed to be that small. It's supposed to have a little bit more of a bite than what it has. So if it has teeth, okay, make sure that them teeth actually interlock, okay? Aside from looking for the cracks and cleanliness, that's one of the other things you wanna look for is alignment, and if it has teeth, that's those teeth interlock. So, what's the other, what's what's so special about these, what, about these forceps? Well, these forceps are um, insulated, right? These are insulated forceps. So these are bipolar forceps. And I've always gotten mixed reviews as to how, if we should be testing these. Um, and all insulated instruments should be tested, right? If you have the capability of testing them, right? So how would you test a bipolar forceps without being able to um, plug it into something? Well, it got two prongs on it. You don't wanna just go on one prong. You wanna capture both prongs, okay? And without bending the prongs, you want your alligator clip to touch both prongs there, right? Okay, and you're gonna use your best um, bet for this is to use this little brush, right? So this one's one of these push button styles and you just wanna brush along the path of this instrument. You'll hear beep on one side, beep on the other and you just wanna go all along the edge of this instrument on the bottom, in between and at the base guys, all right? The base should not now. If I hit myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat. But the base itself should not should not beat. All right. So this one's a good one, and it should be because it's a brand spanking new instrument. But there's something special about this one too. I hope you guys can um, identify that as well. Right. So don't be don't be fooled by the shininess. All that glitter is not always gold. All right. So what about this insulated instrument? Right. So this isn't a bipolar, this is just an insulated instrument, but it does have metal exposure. So you wanna go ahead and clamp at the metal, right? And these, uh, mines is a little exposed here. The alligator clip is exposed, it shouldn't be exposed, um, but you're gonna go ahead and try to hold that tight on there. And same thing with your brush. Go along the edge here. You're gonna go and you're gonna look for any defects in between or along this instrument. Actually, that one's pretty good. I'm surprised this one was good. All right, ah, that's good. Okay. And you're gonna do the same thing for all your insulated forceps, right? Just clip it on there, right? Clip it down really good. Make sure you got a good ground, right? Hold that instrument in place and then go ahead and run your, run your electrical your insulation testing, right? Okay, don't forget to go in between, okay? Because sometimes in between, there's some faults, right? There you go right there, there's a fault right in between. Okay, that can harm the, remember, you're not just protecting the patient, you're protecting the doctor as well, so this is next to his hand, all right? So, I wanted to show you other little specialty here. So, if you have your lighted magnification, that's great, right? But there are other tools as well. You have little microscopes, right? USB microscopes. There are a couple varieties of these. And I'm sorry I can't show you this in action because it actually plugs into my phone. But there's two different styles here. And they work just as great. This one's actually a 200 times zoom. Um, it's a pin style. You can actually take it off the mount and kind of zoom in. Um, thing with microscopes though is you have to have a steady picture it's not like you can't go with a magnifier and kind of just go around with most of the microscopes you can but you got to have a nice steady hand because it will go out of focus very easily um, and even though you have a focus ring on there you want to make sure that it's stationary and you're taking the instruments to whatever that field of view is and kind of go along and look at that instrument all right so these are the different types of magnifiers you have, microscopes, um, all the tools that you need to properly inspect and test your forceps. Um, one last thing that I wanna quiz you guys is, is this type of forcep here. How do you think that this should be handled? Like this or like this? If you know, put your answers on the comment section and tell me why it's this way or that way. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves, keep it 100, continue educating yourself, and until next time, peace.